Physiologically, remember that the heart is covered by the pericardium, which is this kind of a layer membrane, and there's pericardial fluid inside the membrane that just allows the heart to kind of float freely in this pericardial sac. Now, a cardiac tamponade occurs when that fluid just becomes extra. So there's a sudden accumulation of this uh, fluid in that pericardial sac, and that can be either blood or some kind of other fluid. Usually that volume in the pericardial sac is about 10 to 20 milliliters, so very small amount. And even a little bit amount of extra fluid can lead to some serious problems here. So this increase in volume causes compression of the heart because now it can't escape and it compresses on the heart itself and the coronary arteries, which then leads to impaired filling and ejection ability of the heart. And therefore we have decreased oxygen supply to the entire body. So it's basically because the, the layer, the pericardial layer surrounds the heart, if there's fluid, it compresses down on the heart, which then can't expand and contract the way it usually does, which decreases the cardiac output. And then the patient will have certain signs and symptoms that we'll look at in a moment here. So if we look at this graph here, I've drawn a heart with the four chambers, right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle, uh, left ventricle. And in black, is just the heart muscle itself. Then in blue, we have the pericardium around the heart. And then red is the pericardial fluid. And on the left side here, this is just a normal anatomy where when we have what's called a pericardial effusion, which is increased fluid in that pericardial sac, it then compresses the heart muscle up. You can see the heart muscle on that right side here is a lot smaller, but because it can't um, expand and contract the way it usually does, it causes some serious problems.